Hey guys, I thought I'd do a little tutorial on using the Pivot Paint add-on for Blender. Um, now, Epic has already done a pretty in-depth tutorial using 3ds Max, and I also think Houdini has their own set of tools. Um, I think it's only Maya that doesn't have an actual tool set for Pivot Painter right now. Um, but right now we do have one for Blender, and I'll include a link to where you can actually download the add-on. And here, um, I've already got it set up, so it's the usual setup. I mean, like how you enable add-ons, you go in here, and after you download it, just install from file and enable it. So that's... Pivot Painter tools, Unreal tools, Pivot Painter. I'm using a pretty old version of Blender, but it, it works fine. I haven't encountered any issues so far. Um, but then, yeah, once you've enabled that, you'll get this little tool set here, and this little tab, and these are the default settings. Um, I'll try and go over them. Uh, I mean, you could do a lot of stuff like uh, use scaling and rotation like how they do um, the building in Fortnite and stuff but in this tutorial I'm just going to show you how to use this tool to do grass interactive foliage in, in Unreal and I'll also run you through setting up a simple shader in, in UEFO so let's get started. Alright so what I have here is just a a simple patch of grass. Um, each of them are separate meshes, so you, it's better you don't combine them as one mesh. I mean, like when you do export it and import it into Unreal, we will combine it there. But to actually bake out the pivot information, um, we want to have them as separate meshes. Uh, you could go ahead and create grass planes, uh, like actual sprite planes, and have a custom texture on it. But for this tutorial, I'm just going really basic here. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, if you notice, I've got each of their pivot points at the bottom. And also the x-axis is pointing up or towards the actual grass blade. Uh, that's pretty important because, like, the shaders in Unreal, the, the material functions in Unreal actually look for that x extent, as you can see here, the x axis and the x extent. One way to do that is, well, while you're modeling it, it you just keep that in mind and make sure the x axis is pointing up. Uh, but there's also a modified pivot add-on. I'll include a link to this as well. Um, and what you can do with that is you select the object and you click on modify pivot, and that gives you this locator, and you can rotate it or even move it around. And then once you're happy with your edit, you just click commit edit. And then now, as you can see, it's actually updated the um, pivot. But we don't want, we don't, I mean, like, these are already set up that way, so this is perfect. Well, why use Pivot Painter rather than using, I mean, like, there are other ways of animating grass using the vertex shader, uh, vertex animation. But you, you normally get a lot of warping and stretching when you simply use vertex colors and try and animate grass. But when you have uh, pivot, uh, pivot information, you can actually rotate each grass blade individually. Um, and that gives it a much more realistic look. And the other thing is, even though it's one single mesh, you have each pivot point for each of these meshes baked into a texture, and Unreal can read those 
pivot points, like the actual locations of it, and add rotation to that. So that's one way of doing like pretty believable grass and everything handled in the shader, so just vertex animation. So once you had your grass patch set up, uh, model like this, uh, this is the default setting. So there's nothing to change here. Uh, of course, you want to save the texture and set a file location where you want to save the textures. Um, I'll, I'll probably create another tutorial on how to do more advanced foliage like trees because you got to change that to uh, you got to change the parent index to the actual hierarchy. Oh, is that? There we go. Yeah, this one HDR normalized hierarchy position because that has a slightly different setup because you got to actually build a hierarchy of leaves and branches in the trunk. That, that's for another video, actually. So once you're ready, uh, select all your meshes and click on Create Textures. And it's OK, that's done. And you'll also notice when you come to your UV maps, it's created a second UV channel. Um, so it's pretty much baking in all the UV data, I mean, like the pivot, pivot point data into a new UV map. And that's pretty much it. And you just export as an FBX. And then we can jump into Unreal and I'll show you how to set it up there. So I've just got the third person template over here. And we're going to import our grass FBX. There we go. Now, here, the only thing you need to check is combine meshes and well we don't want those two because we're going to create a shader ourselves so we import that and we open it up you know we also want to set the collision to no collision save that and now those two textures we baked out. We need to import these two as well. And this one is the HDR, yeah. So make sure this one is HDR. Um, sRGB is turned off, so that one is fine. Um, we want to go here and set it to nearest. And we do the same thing for this. Oh, sorry. This has to be set to vector displacement map. So ch change that to the default. New stream, it's fine. And again, nearest. Now the next thing we want to do is create the actual material. We call that grass, and it's pretty basic. So just give it a color green, for the base color. Give it a bit of roughness. Let's say like five. And, well, of course, you have a normal map. You can go ahead and set that up. And in the world position offset, that's where we're going to set up all the logic for the actual vertex animation. Now, if you go to the content example um, project that's provided by Epic Games, and if you open the Pivot Painter map, You've got a ton of different examples here, uh, but what we want for grass is this one, 1.11. So if you take a look at this shader, uh, we're pretty much going to use this logic here. Now, this one was done using Pivot Painter 1, the Max script, the Max tool set, um, but the Blender add on actually follows the Pivot Painter 2 
workflow. Uh, so what we want to do is let's just copy all of this, and I'll explain each node like what exactly is happening in each section. Um, so we don't want that. I'll show you how to set that up in a bit. Uh, and we also want to delete this. Now, those two textures, we imported these two. We want to bring these two in here. So, this one. And if you remember, we actually created a second UV channel. So we need to actually define that. So that would be texture coordinate number one. So this is pretty much the pivot data out of Blender. And we've got to use that. We, we can use that to actually animate the grass here. Um, over here. I want to get decode axis vector and hook that up the cross. And here we want to transform position to absolute well space. Yes, it's fine. And you want to subtract that there. Also. And that is also the pivot position. So we don't need this is the old pivot painter node. We get rid of this as well. up to the world position offset. Now we're going to get that uh, error because we don't, we haven't set the actual player character location. For that, we want to create a material parameter collection. So I click, go to materials and textures, and this is a material parameter collection. I'll just give it a name. And you open it, we want to create a vector parameter. So let's bring that down, give it a name, let's call that player location. And hit save. Now what you want to do is select your player character and open it in blueprints. And here we go give it a tick. That in, and we want to get the play and the actor location. Get actor location. There we go. And now we want to set vector parameter value, and it's going to ask you for the parameter collection. So this is the new one we created. Probably should have given it a name, and the parameter name is player location. That's what we set there, and all we have to do now is just hook that up there. It's automatically going to convert it to a linear color and compile. Save this. Now go back to your material, like the actual grass shader, and what we want to look for is collection parameter. And then here we specify which one and the actual param parameter name hook that in and now you see all your errors and warnings gone. So now let's click apply. Also uh, it's better to just have it double sided because we just got grass planes. Let's apply that and if we apply this material If 
me drag that into the world. A few copies, and if you should play the level, there you go. Well, you can you can adjust the influence in the shader. So I'll just show you how to do that really quickly. Uh, it's in the sphere mask here. Um, the radius at the moment is pretty high, so bring that down to let's say 150. Or better yet, let's just make it a parameter. Um, let's call it radius. Give it a default value of 150. Hook that up there and apply again. Now, well, so I think that's done. go. As you can see, each blade of grass is bending individually. You can add a wind effect to it and you'll get really nice effects there as well, so that's up to you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I do plan on making more foliage tutorials using Blender and Pivot Painter for Unreal Engine.